But I don't think Keir Starmer had anything to do with it. I think he's obviously had to stand behind it as the leader. I think what this is, is internal faction fighting. Um, and they've just shot themselves in the foot. I mean, it's what happens when you have people in London HQ making decisions about talking to people in the region. I mean, it was just uproar in the Labour Party. I'm now standing as an independent. The amount of Labour councillors... I'm going to get more votes from Labour members than the Labour candidate's going to get. You know, and cross-party, because as you're saying... I mean, it's funny that you, you, you say that you're not of my politics. I mean, what of, of what I've said about how we work locally, the stuff I do, do you not agree with? Well, I mean, you are on the Corbynite left of the... or were on the Corbynite left of the Labour Party, so clearly you're not well, my politics. Well, I'm not sure that's true, you see, because there's well, a lot Well, that's your of, reputation. Yeah, there's a lot of lazy <laughs> journalism out there when people are saying, there's a bloke Hang in the North East... Nice you. <laughs> you have, and thank you very much for that. But local businesses are supporting me and yeah. say, you know, he's doing a good job, he knows how to deliver. Um, Robert was nodding away there when I was saying how to do it. Well, Tory cabinet ministers have come out and said, look, the guy knows what he's doing. So I'm not sure this Corbynista label is accurate. He OK, could be well, I mean, f f fair enough. But it must really stick in your throat that you you've devoted a lifetime to the Labour Party and they've essentially expelled you on the basis that you sh you were on a platform with the award-winning filmmaker Ken Loach, who is not somebody who's one of my favourite people. But um, it was at some sort of arts festival or something, and that that's your crime. <laughs> that, Am I that, right? That indeed is is what they briefed. They never they've never given me a reason. Um, the actual reason is they had a favoured candidate and they've just slid that person in. Um, but the reason they they started briefing. Uh, was yet Ken Loach, who's done three feature films in the North East. I was talking to him about it at a film festival. This is the same guy that Pope Francis invited to the Sistine Chapel. So, you know, <laughs> if, if you're saying that I'm a problem, you've got to come out against the entire Catholic Church. It I, makes no sense. Ash, what do you make of this? I mean, I think when you look at the pattern of expulsions and exclusions of candidates, it's very clear what kind of operation Keir Starmer is running. What he wants, I think, is total control over candidate selections. He wants to isolate and marginalise the left wing of his party. And I think because he's currently riding very high in the polls because the Conservatives are so unpopular, he's got the political cover to do that. Um, I remember during the Corbyn years when there was even the suggestion of deselection or someone was possibly up for a trigger ballot, it would be covered wall to wall in Westminster media. People would call it Stalinism. People would call it next stop the gulag. Whereas when you're seeing wholesale marginalisation of an entire wing of the party, often on incredible incredibly flimsy pretexts, as we've just discussed, there is much less criticism of it. But polling would suggest that their strategy is working, wouldn't it? Labour have got a 20-point lead and have done for a year. I don't think that's because they've stopped Jamie Driscoll from standing as the <laughs> Labour candidate. I think that He's not that, a man popular, no. No, I think that the polling lead is a result of people being really dissatisfied with the current state of affairs of politics, and Labour are the beneficiaries of that. But I don't necessarily think the roots of it are that deep, and I wonder that if Keir Starmer does form a government, um, perhaps the changes that he makes aren't as... Uh, far-reaching as people would like, that he'll come under attack from the press or come under attack from the Conservatives and opposition, and you'll start seeing that support weaken because he doesn't have, I think, depth of support in the country. Robert? Well, that's a very interesting point because I think that although an election is probably a year away and that isn't a, that long a time, I don't think the British public have yet finally made up their mind about Keir Starmer and Labour. I think, yes, they're the beneficiaries of what's been happening in the Conservative Party. There's no doubt about that. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. Uh, and that doesn't make the Conservatives' job very easy. But I do think there is this question mark and I think don't know is probably the biggest column at the moment uh, and, and therefore you know the idea that somehow this is an inevitable march to victory for the Labour Party and all they need to do is be very boring which they're doing very well uh, may I say and then be boring in government so is I think just not nearly enough not good enough. Are you going to give Jamie an endorsement government. tonight? Well look I'm going to not intrude on the personal grief of uh, the Labour Party. I was brought up in South Wales by the way so I've lived with uh, the Labour Party in, in majority rule for most of the time and I found they disliked each other more than they disliked me which was an interesting uh, point <laughs> but look I, I, I think you, 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 you're you making the point that local is good, all politics are local as Tip O'Neill famously said you're making that point very eloquently and I'm a great believer actually where you've got that meaningful structure of devolved government, it can work, you're doing it, Andy Street's doing it in the West Midlands you know we've got some good examples here of where just getting it out of Whitehall is good for local people and it's good for delivery.